Uh, for the next video, we will look at sternocleidomastoid and the scalenes. And we look at scalenes as a group rather than trying to specify anterior, middle and posterior fibers to start with. The sternocleidomastoid, think of the name, sternum, clavicle. So they attach from these two areas and it'll go to the mastoid process here. The SCM bilaterally will almost cause a protraction of the cervical spine. So if you have a forward head posture, then no doubt both sides bilaterally will be short and tight. If one side is tight, say for instance this side is tight, then I might end up with a side bending and a rotation to the opposite side. So if you notice this, they actually call it a torticollis. The scalenes come roughly from C2 to C7 and then they will attach to the first and second rib. And then these muscles, they are involved in movements of the C-spine, as in they can side bend and rotate, but they also allow the first and second rib to elevate on the inspiration. What we've got with the scalenes is where they actually attach between the anterior and middle fibers, it forms a triangle. And the triangle is almost called the interscaling triangle and the thoracic outlet will come through that, which is the brachial plexus from C5 to T1 and the subclavian artery. Now what we're gonna do, we're gonna assess in a very simplistic manner. If I use the model, Denise, what we're gonna do initially is ask the patient to sit tall, good, and then to rotate the neck as far as she can to one side. And for instance, if the patient is limited to rotation, then it could well be the same side that is limiting the movement with the scalenes. Even though this muscle here is contracting, is actually the opposite side that would limit the movement. And the same to this side. The normal range of motion for cervical will be 80 degrees to the left and 80 degrees to the right. And she is a bit limited, and yes, it could be many other structures that are responsible for the limitation of motion. But if we focus on the SCM and scalenes, then we might find we can improve the movement. So let's go this way to start with. And then if I, I tend to bring my knee onto the couch, so I put my posture into a better position, and I place my elbow across her shoulder, and I lightly cradle her head here. And what I'm gonna ask my patient to do is slowly rotate to the side, so she's rotating into my forearm, again for 10 seconds, approximately 20% effort. After 10 seconds, I would say to my patient, take a breath in, and as they breathe out, I slowly encourage further rotation. This actually lengthens the SEM on this side, even though the SEM on this side is contracting. So we'll take a breath in, please, and as they breathe out, rotate this way, into my forearm, She's pushing for 10 seconds, approximately 20% effort. She will normally take a breath in, do it in those 10 seconds, and relax. Take a breath in, please. And then on the out breath, I then slowly encourage further rotation. Try not to place your hands onto the side of the face and use the forearm just to control that movement. And then by using that rotation technique, it's very effective at one, improving the movement, and secondly, to encourage lengthening of the sternocleidomastoid and the scalenes.